We are going to start mobilization of radiocarpal joints. The concave distal radius articulates with the convex proximal row of carpals, which is composed of the scaphoid, lunate, and triquetrum. Resting position is the straight line through the radius and third metacarpal with slight ulnar deviation. Patient position, sitting with the forearm supported on the treatment table and wrist over the edge of the table. Hand placement, with the hand closest to the patient, grasp around the styloid processes and fixate the radius and ulna against the table. Grasp around the distal row of carpals with your other hand, pull in the distal direction with respect to the arm, and apply the glide. Now we will apply dorsal glide to increase wrist flexion. Resting position is the same, patient position is the same. Hand placement with the hand closest to the patient, grasp around the styloid processes and fixate the radius and ulna against the table. Grasp around the distal row of carpals with your other hand, pull in the distal direction with respect to the arm, and apply the glide. Now we will apply radial glide to increase ulnar deviation of the radiocarpal joint. Resting position is the same, patient position is the same. Hand placement with the hand closest to the patient, grasp around the styloid processes and fixate the radius and ulna against the table. Grasp around the distal row of the carpals with your other hand, pull in the distal direction with respect to the arm, and apply the glide. Now we will apply ulnar glide to increase radial deviation of the radiocarpal joints. Resting position is the same, patient position is the same. Hand placement with the hand closest to the patient, grasp around the styloid processes and fixate the radius and ulna against the table. Grasp around the distal row of carpals with your other hand, Pull in a distal direction with respect to the arm and apply the glide. Specific carpal mobilizations. Specific techniques to mobilize carpal bones may be necessary to gain full range of motion of the wrist. Patient and therapist positions. The patient sits. The therapist stands and grasps the patient's hand so the elbow hangs unsupported. The weight of the arm provides slight distraction to the joints, so you then need only apply the glides. Now we have to apply glide to increase flexion. Place the stabilizing index fingers under the bone that is convex and the mobilizing thumbs overlapped on the dorsal surface of the bone that is concave. In each case, the force comes from the overlapping thumbs on the dorsal surface. First, index finger stabilizes scaphoid, then thumbs on the dorsum of the concave radius, and apply the glide. Second, index finger stabilizes lunate, thumbs on the dorsum of the concave radius, and apply the glide.
Third, index finger stabilizes scaphoid. Thumbs on the dorsum of trapezium trapezoid unit and apply the glide. Fourth, index finger stabilizes capitate. Thumbs on the dorsum of concave lunate and apply the glide. Fifth, index finger stabilizes hamid. Then thumbs on the dorsum of concave triquetrum and apply the glide. Now, we will apply glide to increase extension. Place the stabilizing index fingers under the bone that is concave, overlapping the thumbs and place them on the dorsal surface of the bone that is convex. The thumbs provide the manipulating force. In each case, the force comes from the overlapping thumbs on the dorsal surface. First, index finger stabilizes radius. Thumbs on dorsum of convex scaphoid. And apply the glide. Second, index finger stabilizes radius. Thumbs on the dorsum of convex lunate and apply the glide. Third, index finger stabilizes trapezium trapezoid unit. Thumbs on the dorsum of convex scaphoid and apply the glide. Fourth, index finger stabilizes lunate. Thumbs on dorsum of convex capitate. And apply the glide. Fifth, index finger stabilizes triquetrum. Thumbs on the dorsum of convex hamid and apply the glide. 